Welcome to Artistic Adventures. We're starting a new project today, and we're going to be making a Vampire Slayer costume for my one-third size BJD, Jessica. Has there ever been a character that captured the imagination of monster lovers more than Count Dracula? I think he's had so many reincarnations that it's crazy. But we gotta slay them, you know, because they're bad. So I think that using Jessica is going to be great because she's she's bigger and making the costume will be a lot more I guess realistic because the details don't have to be so tiny. So here she is again if you if you forgot what she looked like since we did the face up I did put a wig on her and it does have a little velcro attachment at the top to keep it on. We're going to take the wig off for now so it'll be easier to work on her and let's get started. The first thing we're going to do uh, for this video is make the bustier. Now the one thing that this doll has is really large breasts <laughs> and so the bustier we're going to have to make it so that it fits around the curve. So I'm putting some saran wrap down and molding it around the breast because if I just put it across them flat uh, the the cleavage in between would be lost. It would just be flat across. So I'm really molding the saran around it and using the tape to accentuate all the curves of the breast. And then we'll be able to mold our bustier to this. But the saran will protect the doll. All right, now I'm using some Mod, Mod Podge uh, just on the cups of the breast. And I just wanted to do this to get a really small small smooth <laughs> can't talk today smooth mold and I'm just using a paintbrush to sort of spread it around there and then I'm just taking some black t-shirt material and stretching it over the breast making sure that I get a nice smooth mold with the glue and then I'm going to go ahead and take another piece of this black material and you do this in two pieces so you can get the uh, the area between the breasts to mold. If you just put a straight piece across there, it wouldn't. So just crisscrossing that over between the breast and gluing it down on the other breast. Now with the Mod, Mod Podge, it's not like E6000. It does take a while to dry. So I had to, to leave her for a couple of hours and let that glue set up. Now, don't be worried about the glue showing through or, you know, anything that appears on this black material. This is not going to be the end result. We're going to put some leather, fake leather material on top of this. So this is just our base so we have something to glue to and also helps us to sort of mold the shape of the bustier before we start using the the uh, fake leather material. So right now I'm just cutting across and you know making sure we have the definition of how we want this to look. And now I'm going to put a little more, little more Mod Podge on her abdomen area and fold that piece over and glue that to it. And I had to let that dry also a little while. And also just wrapping it around the back and looking to see where, you know, that we have enough fabric and then we'll, we'll glue the back in just a minute. Now what I'm doing right now is cutting a little area out because I want to make a dart and I'm going to glue this these two sides here so that I can get a little more accentuation of her waist. So that that's the nice thing about doing this process this way is you can mold the fabric to it. I really didn't have to sew anything other than at the end I did have to sew the uh, a piece of the area over the breast, but I'll show you that a little bit later. So I did that on both sides, sort of made a, uh, a dart and gathered that into the waist so we have a nice curved shape. And this is starting to actually look like a bustier. Yep. So now we're going to go ahead and glue the parts to the back. And this will be removable, but for the purposes of our molding here, we're going to go ahead and glue these two pieces together because we want to get a nice tight fit 
so that we can do the rest of, of the uh, gluing on a nice flat surface. We'll be cutting this later to open it up and it will be removable. We'll have a, a Velcro closer. All right, so now we've trimmed it up a little bit and we've got our basic shape down. You can go in at this point if you want and trim it a little bit more so that you get it exactly where you want it before we start putting the leather down. You can always uh, trim some of the material out from under the leather, the leather if you have to later on. But I'm making it sort of a slight dip down in the front and then have it come up more in the back, more towards uh, the actual waist. But I want the front part to come down over the waist. We're going to be making her a pair of tight pants, of course, <laughs> and they'll be up under the bustier. All right, so we got this trimmed up and looking pretty good. And now we'll be ready to start putting some leather, fake leather material on the doll. Now, to do this, what I did is make some patterns out of paper towels. So I made the front part so that it comes up between the breasts in a point and then has a curve on the sides. And then the side piece has a curve in the opposite direction because I want to have a little space between that. And then the back piece we'll put on later, but uh, I did go ahead and cut that out. Now these are the straps I cut out from the, from the leather material. And we'll be making straps for this also. So I've got that black leather sort of textured looking material and then I'm putting E6000 on. I can't I can't deal with the Mod Podge anymore. It just takes too long to dry. So this dries pretty fast and it holds really well. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the E6000 for the rest of this. All right, so we've got our piece glued and holding by the edges. We're going to place it up under the, the breast and press it down. And that looks great. And now we can put the sides on. Now when I do the sides, I do have this gap uh, at the waist between the front piece of leather and the side piece. And I'm doing that on purpose because I want to do some contrast work in that area, which we'll do a little bit later. All right, so we're just going to glue that piece under there. And then we'll do the same thing to the other side. We're going to glue that down. And like I said, you know, if you have some unevenness, you can always trim it up. That's the nice thing about doing it this way. Now, if you wanted to sew it, you could use the black material as a pattern and cut it out in pieces and then sew it. But I really prefer doing it this way because I really want it to look very molded. All right, I'm using some brass jump rings here. I'm going to make some straps to attach to the bustier at the shoulders. So I'm taking a piece of that fake leather material and putting it through the ring, and then I'm going to glue it down and make a little short piece. This is going to attach to the front part above the breast. And I'm going to make two of those. And just trying to make them you know, the same size at this point. You can always make them smaller if you have to. All right, so we have our two sizes. Those are going to go onto the front of the bustier. And now we're going to pull out some really cute buckles that I have on hand. And they're, so they're sort of the same brass color, so they'll match the jump rings. And we're going to have to glue a piece of this fake leather to this to this uh, buckle. All right, and my little pieces here are not sticking together or holding the glue, so I'm going to have to put a clamp on them until they dry. It's always good to have these little clamps around for stuff like this. These little small clamps they really help out a lot, so you don't have to sit there and hold it. All right, so we'll put that aside, and now we can work on attaching some straps to this. Now there's a curve to the buckles, so we're going to have to cut a curve in the fabric so that it doesn't show behind the buckle. All right, just putting a little glue on there, cutting a curve out 
in the material and then we're gluing that to the back of the buckle and making sure that the the I'm not sure what that's called the thing that sticks through the leather the little metal piece anyway you want that to be pointed up because we're going to put another piece of fabric through there all right so we have our two pieces glued together now we're going to cut some longer straps these are going to come over from the back and they'll go through the buckle because I want the, the buckle to show in the front. And I'm just cutting a little point to the ends of these long strips so they have a point on them because that will show after we put it through the buckle. Do the same thing to the other side. And then we're ready to measure it just to see, make sure we've got it long enough to fit over. Now we're not going to glue it to the back yet because I want to make sure that I have it tight. So we'll do the front part first, but I could trim it. I did trim it just a little bit. It was a little bit too long. All right, so now we're going to take that buckled piece that we did and we're going to attach that to the ring, the small ring piece. And this, the small ring piece is going to attach to the front of the bustier, right very close to the edge. So after we put the buckle on, we put another piece of material through the, the little ring from the buckle and then glued that down. So you took the piece that was glued to the buckle and put it through the ring, okay? And then I had to put those in the clamp to let them get glued. So now we have the piece of material, the piece of material attached to the ring, another piece of material through the ring and attached to the buckle. Now we're going to put that pointed, long pointed piece through the other side of the buckle, poke a hole in it with a sharp pointy tool, and then attach it down and put a little dab of glue on the bottom to hold it. And there's our completed buckle look. And we're going to do the same thing to the other side, and then we can attach them to the bustier. And I don't do, like I said, I'm going to attach it to the front part first so we get it measured correctly so that it looks symmetrical. And then we can attach it to the back and make sure that the straps are tight. All right, so we, now we have our two pieces attached. And we're going to just go ahead and glue it to the bustier right at the top. And also do that to the other side. We, that way we have, you know, you're able to see the buckle, which is really decorative. It's really the reason that I did it. Kind of looks vampire slayer-ish, right? All right, so now we, we're crossing these over, and I'm putting them a little bit at an angle so that they stay on the shoulders, and trimming them a little bit more, and then gluing them to the top, to the bottom, I'm sorry, to the top of the uh it's that t-shirt material, and then we're going to put the leather on top of that so that doesn't show. All right, so there's our buckles in the front. I think they're looking pretty cute. There's going to be a lot more to this bustier when we start doing the um, weapons, but this video is pretty long just making it, so we'll just do the basics of how to make the bustier, and then we'll do more, more to it at the end when we are giving her her weapons and a little bit more trim. All right, so now we're ready to put the leather piece on the back. And we just line that up on the sides and make sure we got plenty. So we're gonna go over to just off center and glue this down. And then we'll do the same thing to the other side, leaving that overlapped part open. And that way we can cut, off, cut a, a seam up the middle and then overlap the pieces to make the closure. All right, so we're going to glue down that other side, leaving the two X, the two lengths uh, in the middle sticking up. And once they're glued down, you see we have we can make a cut and open that up. 
but we have enough material to fold over so we can put the Velcro. Alright, so we're going to fold that over and then we're going to take a strip of Velcro that's already been pieced, it's put together and then we just put uh, the E6000 on both sides of that and stick it underneath there and glue it. And that's our little closure in the back. So let that dry and then we'll be able to remove this as needed. And that's how the back will look. Alright, so we've got the leather on and now I'm going to take some gold metallic paint and you remember I said I was going to do some contrast work in that opening. It's sort of like a little slit that's wider in the middle and at the ends it's pointed. So I'm just taking the gold metallic paint and I'm painting on the t-shirt material, not on the leather. So this is just the t-shirt material that shows in that gap between the two pieces of leather. I just thought it would look nice to have a little bit of contrast in this in this all black costume. <laughs> I mean, we got to have a little bit of glitter, right? <laughs> a little bit of gold. All right, so we got that finished and we'll let that dry for a little while. That gives her kind of a nice look. Also accentuates her waist. It's kind of like that. Now we're going to start working on the area over the breast. Um, I took a piece of the of a brown fake leather and sewed some darts on either side to make the cup. And you may have to work on this a little bit to make sure that you fit it fits properly over the breast. After you get it to where it, it fits the way you want it to, then you can trim the, the excess around the edges. So I just want this to be over the cup part of the bustier. I'm going to do a something here that's going to help take a, away a little bit of the volume of her breasts the way they look because like right now they look like really blinding <laughs> it's like wow so um, I'll show you a little trick that you can use to to um, make this look make them look a little bit less blinding <laughs> and uh, also you know I like to do the contrasting material just because I think like if you were really a fighter, you would probably have, you know, extra protection over over these sensitive areas. So that's why I'm putting the extra leather up there. I remember when I was on the fencing team in college, we had these little metal uh, discs that we had to put inside our bras to protect our breasts when we were fencing. We called them hubcaps. <laughs> but that's kind of what this reminded me of. So, okay, we got those kind of fitted on there. And once you get you're satisfied with how they fit, then we're going to glue them down to the the uh, cup part of the breast. And I'm just putting some glue around the edge, not too close because I don't want it to squeeze out, and then a little bit around the rest of the breast area, and trimming off any uneven places, and then we'll place this over the glue. Now, right now, you're probably thinking, why am I saying I'm going to minimize when I'm putting this contrasting color on? Because that actually, when if you look at it, actually makes it look bigger at this point than just the plain black. And that's true, but I am going to do something a little bit more to these in just a minute. All right, so we have our two cups, leather cups, glued down. And now we're going to do some color blocking. That will help take away some of the volume of uh, the way her breasts look. So what I'm doing is cutting a curved piece that's just going to go across the top and fitting it. And then I need to trim that just a little bit. It's a little too wide. But I want to get the top part right. And then I can cur uh, trim the curve on the bottom to fit. So what we're going to do is cut down the amount of the brown that shows, and that will make her breast look a little bit smaller, not quite so so huge. All right, so I've got that piece done, and I glued that on top of the brown, trimmed it. We're going to do the same thing to the other side. And when you do this, it's really just sort of trial and error, just sort of put it up there trim a little bit around and then 
you know, work with it to get it to where you want it to be. I'm just sort of eyeballing it, really, at this point. Once I get the top done, that's the most important part because you want that to match the top of the leather, the brown leather part. And then you can trim up the bottom to match. And we'll just go ahead, once we get that trimmed, and put a little glue across the top and glue that down. So you can already see it does minimize the look a little bit. And we're going to do the same thing to the bottom and that'll help even more. So I'm starting by cutting a, a curved piece, just sort of looking at it and cutting it as I think it looks like it's curved. And then we can fit it up against it and trim it as needed. This is just a little trick. It's sort of like when you do the the things we did at the waist here. That sort of uh, accent, accentuates the curve of her waist. It makes it, you know, look nicer, a little curvier. That's why they say people who are heavy should not wear horizontal stripes. You you should wear vertical stripes because it just makes the eye sort of tricks the eye to think it's you're smaller. All right, so we have um, finished those two trim pieces, and now I cut a little diamond shape out of the black leather, and I'm going to put this in the center just to cover up that seam between the two brown leather pieces. And that's just about it, guys. There's our Vampire Slayer bustier. All right, so now we can take it off of the doll, cut off the plastic, and see how it looks without all that plastic underneath it. And you can take this time to trim up any edges that are uneven and look a little unsightly. And now we can slip it back on her, close it off in the back with the Velcro, and this bustier is finished. I think it turned out really cool. I'm looking forward to doing the rest of this project. It's going to be really really interesting, especially the weapons. So that's how it looks. There's a steel picture of the front, so you can get a better look at it. I really like the buckle detail. And there's the back with the Velcro closure, and another view of the front. So I hope you enjoyed this part of our Vampire Slayer project. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Also, tell me who your favorite vampire is. I have this thing for Gary Oldman in, his, in the Dracula uh, movie. I don't know why, I just really loved him in that movie. But tell me in the comments who your favorite vampire is. And we got more coming up. The next thing we're going to do is make her pants. And then we'll be doing a coat and some weapons. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Thanks and bye.